How's it going guys? We have a difficult question for pathology. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, and the HLMA underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group channel down below. Let's start the clip. 34-year-old woman. She has a two-hour history of excruciating left flank pain. Similar episode a year ago. She also reports periodic pounding headaches, palpitations for the past six months. What's most likely contributory to the patient's headaches? So the starting point is making the diagnosis. Do you know what this patient has? Do you know what's causing the flank pain here? Do you know what this sounds like in isolation without any other information? This sounds like nephrolithiasis, doesn't it? Excruciating flank pain. We could say it's radiating to the groin, which would make it urotero-lithiasis. So urolithiasis is the general umbrella term. See if she had a similar episode a year ago. Okay. And there's periodic pounding headaches and palpitations. Doesn't that sound like you say, oh, it could be migraines. You're right with the headaches, but palpitations, not really. This is buzzy for pheochromocytoma, isn't it? So what is it when you combine pheochromocytoma with hypercalcemia. It's MEN2A, isn't it? So we could do a long seminar on all that. So MEN2 is going to be pheochromocytoma, medullary thyroid cancer. MEN2A is going to be parathyroid adenoma or diffuse fork gland hyperplasia, causing hypercalcemia. MEN2B, mucosal neuromas, marfolite body habitus. MEN1, obviously. I mean, so MEN2 is the RET gene, RET proto-oncogene. And MEN1, in contrast, that's going to be your pituitary parathyroid pancreas. So we're asking you what's most likely contributory to the patient's pheochromocytoma causing symptoms. Choice A, adrenal cortical hypersecretion is wrong. Well, pheochromocytoma is a tumor of the adrenal medulla, not the adrenal cortex. The adrenal cortex is your zona glomerulosa fasciculata reticularis secreting aldosterone, cortisol, DHEAS, which is an androgen and androstene dion respectively, right? But the adrenal medulla secretes catecholamines. So you've got pheochromocytoma. It's going to be secreting norepinephrine, epinephrine, and those are going to be secreted paroxysmally, which means episodic. And that's going to cause pounding headaches, palpitations. And they can give you a patient who has a blood pressure of 120 on 80, and then they tell you that the patient sits up on the operating table or is going into surgery and gets a stressor and they're going to get a surge in blood pressure. So that can cause symptoms, all right? So it can be uh, idiopathic slash sporadic, the hypersecretion, or it can be stress-related. So adrenal cortical hypersecretion could refer to Kahn syndrome, and aldosterone screening tumor could refer to cortisol screening tumor, which would be Cushing syndrome, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, enterochromaffin cell hyperscretion is wrong. This refers to the serotonin secreting cells within the GI tract, okay? So 90% of the body's serotonin is produced within the GI tract. You think serotonin, oh, like psychiatry and depression and stuff. You're right, it has a role in the CNS, of course, but it's actually an interesting factoid. You know that most serotonin is actually within the GI tract, okay? Wrong fucking answer. I see enterochromaffin like cell excretion is wrong. This would be histamine secretion. Okay, I don't know what to tell you. So I guess they look like enterochromaffin cells, but they're not. But when you have stomach acid secretion, you've got gastrin produced by G cells, and that will bind directly to the parietal cells. You also have enterochromaffin like cells secreting histamine, and the H2 will. Uh, or agonism at the H2 receptor on parietal cells will stimulate uh, hydrochloric acid release. And then you've also got muscarinic receptors, M3 mostly, on the parietal cells. So those three mechanisms are synergistic for acid secretion. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, preganglionic synthetic acetylcholine release. Correct answer. Now, the adrenal medulla mechanism for catecholamine release is as it's listed right here, you got these preganglionic synthetic neurons and they release acetylcholine and they bind to nicotinic receptors on the adrenal gland, okay? Now, some of you might say, but wait a second, wouldn't the catecholamine release be autonomous with pheochromocytoma? The answer is yes. So you would have catecholamine release that is unrelated or untethered, not dependent on there being some sort of trigger or stimulus. But we know, and this is high yield for your assimilia, that stressor events, as I already mentioned, they'll tell you patients sits up on the operating table and they get super high blood pressure. 
patient is intraoperative and they get a super high blood pressure. So stressors can still trigger the catecholamine release. It's high yield. Okay, so let's look. And also just uh, kindergarten stuff real quick. The treatment for FEO is what? I'm asking you watching this. It's phenoxybenzamine, right? And phenoxybenzamine, what's its mechanism of action? I'm asking you. It's an irreversible alpha blocker with the focus being on alpha-1. So you want to block alpha-1 receptors first. You don't want to give a beta blocker first because if you do, you get what's called unopposed alpha or the norepinephrine epinephrine floating around. They would have nothing to bind to but alpha receptors. Don't worry about alpha-2 effect. It's negligible. Alpha-1 receptors on arterials, when they're agonized, you get constriction of the systemic arterials. You surge of blood pressure, you kill the patient. So you don't want to block beta receptors first. You're going to block alpha receptors first with phenoxybenzamine. Choice C, rank L, rank interactions wrong. So you say that's like, wouldn't that happen here? Yeah, but it's not responsible for the headaches. Okay, so the hypercalcemia, if you had a parathyroid adenoma, if you use gland hyperplasia, yes, PTH binds to its receptor on osteoblast. It's going to cause the osteoblast to express rank L, binds to rank receptor on osteoclast, which in turn, in turn induces bone resorption and you would release calcium into the blood. In addition, PTH, of course, kind of reabsorb calcium at the late DCT via an apical calcium channel, and then also it's going to activate vitamin D in the PCT to 125, which will go to the small bowel, increase calcium absorption. So PTH obviously increases uh, calcium, cause hypercalcemia, but choice E is not the mechanism clearly for headaches. Wrong fucking answer. 